Donald Trump's lawyers are trying to use the Supreme Court's immunity ruling to get the New York hush money case dismissed. But Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, who of course led this successful prosecution, is fighting back. In a filing made public yesterday, Bragg's office argued that the court's decision on Trump's immunity for official acts while he was president has no bearing on his conviction on charges of falsifying business records in New York. Let's bring in my legal panel. Good to have Lisa Rubin, MSNBC legal correspondent, and Catherine Christian, MSNBC legal analyst and former assistant Manhattan district attorney, both with me here on set. Uh, tell us, uh, Lisa, how this back and forth from Bragg's team and Trump's lawyers has gone. I, these two people do not see this issue the same way. Sometimes you can read legal briefs and see, here's a Venn diagram and here's a small slice where there is some agreement between them. This is like reading two vastly different universes of facts and circumstances here. There just is no agreement between them. And therefore, it will be really interesting to see how Judge Juan Mershon, who presided over the trial, resolves this motion where Trump is trying to throw out the verdict, not because he claims he was immune from prosecution. He is claiming that the evidence that was used at trial includes evidence of during his presidency. And that's why the verdict has to be set aside. So this is confusing for some people because Trump wasn't president when it happened, right? Is that the moment that counts? No. In fact, people keep saying, how could hush money payments, how could he get immunity for that? That's not what the defense are arguing. The defense are saying that evidence that went in trial was evidence that happened when Donald Trump was president. Hope, Hope Hicks, his communications director, the conversation that she had with him in the Oval Office about, he said to her, according to her, <laughs> it's so good that this Stormy Daniels kerfuffle came out now as opposed to during the campaign. Mm -hmm. That happened in the tweets about Michael Cohen happened when he was president. So it's not the hush money pre uh, payments that happened before. It's what happened when he was president. Meantime, Lisa, Trump's lawyers are demanding that the judge in the civil fraud case, Arthur Ngoron, recuse himself over a reported conversation that he had with an attorney about the case, which they're alleging is an ethics violation, right? Uh, at using a highly technical term, Ngoron called this a nothing burger, um, <laughs> saying he was harangued by the attorney in question. He didn't discuss any facts of the case. Trump's team has tried to get this judge thrown off the case multiple times. Will they have any luck this time? I don't think so. And in fact, one of the things that they had said in their briefing was that they believed that there was an ongoing judicial investigation of Judge Ngoron by a panel empowered by the state to look into judicial misconduct. Judge Ngoron, in his opinion, denying their motion for recusal, says, to the best of my knowledge, that investigation doesn't exist either. So I don't think that they'll succeed there. So the trial's over, but Angoran still has some jurisdiction, right, Catherine, including ordering an independent monitor to continue to oversee the Trump Organization, I think, for three years, right? Yeah, that's why he has jurisdiction, because former judge Barbara Jones is the independent monitor, and she reports to him and gives him updates. So, Lisa, Trump is back to railing against uh, his legal cases on social media, something we've seen once or twice before. You wrote a piece for MSNBC um, yesterday, I think it was, detailing how he talked about his defamation case about uh, ABC News George Stephanopoulos, Judge Aileen Cannon's dismissal of the classified documents case, his gag order in the New York criminal case. Um, also, that he cast himself as the big winner here. But what's the truth? I think he is not quite the winner that he claims that he is, and he's not quite the victim that he claims he is either. I mean, of those three characterizations yesterday, the one that made my jaw drop the most was when he said that the gag order that's still in place in the New York criminal case is impeding him from campaigning against Vice President Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, nobody affiliated with their administration is even remotely impacted by that gag order. The remnants of the gag order that are still in place have to do with the jurors and they have to do with people who are actually participants in the trial. The lawyers, the courtroom personnel, their family members, and then specifically the family members of the judge and of Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. How that relates to Kamala Harris and his inability to campaign against her, I'm really at a loss for words there, Chris. So that's a political argument. It has yes. no legal standing at all that you see. 
Yeah, it's well, it's also not truthful. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's, and, and the courts he, he can tend say to try to deal he wants truth. to say about Vice President Harris and President Biden, and has and has, and he can continue to do that. He is not being prevented from saying anything about them. So, when is the next time we're going to see him in court? It's the sentencing, yes. Not necessarily, um, but in all likelihood at his sentencing, if it happens. And, and I want to just flag for you and our viewers, on September 6th, Judge Mershon has put a deadline on himself to decide on this motion That's to right. set aside mm -hmm. the verdict. That's not a hearing we expect to be in person, but we will hear from the judge on that date, barring any unforeseen circumstances. And depending on his answer, then we'll have that sentencing on September 18th, Chris.